Today we're going to look at using custom visuals to build a gauge chart like the one that you can see on the screen. Now your custom visuals can all be downloaded from the custom visual website. So you've got appspowerbi.com forward slash visuals. And in custom visuals here, you'll see a whole suite of custom visuals. Now, some of these visuals have been made by Microsoft. Some of them have been made by Microsoft partners. But these can all be downloaded and they can be used free of charge. There's also a set of ore-powered visuals. Now, when you have ore-powered visuals, there is something different that you need to do. So for the moment, we're just going to look at these particular custom visuals here. And in a later session, we'll have a look at some of the ore-powered visuals. Now, the visual that we are going to look at is the dial gauge. So when you find the visual that you want, all you need to do is download the visual. And when you download the visual, it'll download. Make sure you save it to a location on your computer that you can easily find because then you need to then upload this to your Power BI. So back in Power BI, once you've downloaded the visual, if you click on these three little dots in your visualizations, you have import custom visual. And you get an import warning that if they're not provided by Microsoft, they could contain security or privacy risk. So we understand that we're going to go ahead and we are going to import. And I have mine saved in a custom visuals folder. I'm just going to open that and it'll say that the visual was successfully imported to the report and say OK. And then you will find this new little icon on your visualizations. And if we click on our icon, we then are ready to have a look at the visualization. So what sort of data are we going to use in this gauge visualization? So here's the table of data that we have loaded up into Power BI. And what we have is sales reps. We have the target sales. We have their actual sales. And then we have the percentage of the target. Now, with this particular company that we were looking at, when the employee reach, reaches their target sales, they get an on-target sales bonus. But the sales reps are paid on commission, and commission starts at less of the target sales. So it actually starts at the break-even point for that particular sales rep. So there's a minimum sales that the sales rep must get before commission kicks in, and then they have a target sales to get an on-target sales bonus. The only problem is, is that the sales are restricted. They have a constraint and the constraint is the amount of products that they have in stock. And this is represented by this maximum sales column that we have over here. And we want to be able to produce a gauge chart to see how the employees are doing against the target sales and the actual sales and the sales for commission. So we're going to use the gauge chart for that. Now, this particular gauge chart is not really as intuitive as we would like it to be. Although the visualization is quite good, actually adding the figures in can be a little bit confusing. So what we have is, if we have a look at our fields, we have min, max, target start, target end, actual start, actual end, pointer value, percentage, chart name, and then we have the normal filters with the visual level filter with the page level and the report level filters that you would see all of the time. So let me show you what values you would need to use to get this gauge chart working correctly. The first thing would be the actual sales. Now our actual sales, which is this column here, that is where we want our pointer to be. So this would be our pointer value. So I'm going to take our actual sales and I'm going to drag this straight down to our pointer value. Now we can see our actual sales, 0.3 million, has come up in here. The only thing is now with this gauge, everything is green and we have our pointer pointing to the very top. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to set the values on the pointer now we can have a maximum value. We have maximum sales and we have maximum sales in this case because we have a constraint on stock and they're the maximum sales that the sales rep can actually get for the particular products that they sell. So if we take our maximum and we drop this down to maximum, we can see now 0.65 million, 0.65 million has now come in as our maximum. 
But what you'd normally see on a gauge chart is three different colours. You'd see a red, an orange and a green. So how would we add these to this particular gauge chart? Well, the first thing is we have a minimum sales for commission. So no commission is paid before this minimum sales. But then we also have our target sales and our percentage target. As we mentioned, our minimum sales for commission is a lower value than our target sales. So the employee gets commission when it reaches this level of sales, but when it reaches its target level of sales, then they will get the on-target bonus. So the minimum sales for commission is going to be the end of the red field. But these fields down here, they don't really give you too much detail of what's red and what's yellow. So we, we will go through them here. Our actual start, well, we want to start at zero. If you didn't want to start at zero, you would change the actual start value. The actual end is going to be our minimum sales for commission. So I'm going to drop that in there. So the employee won't get any sales as long as the pointer is in the red. But between the minimum sales for commission and the target sales, the employee will get commission, but they haven't hit their target sales. So we now need an orange column for our target sales. Now, if our target start didn't end at the same place as our actual end, we would put it in. But because we want them to run concur concurrent, we don't want anything put into our target start. What we will do is put something into our target end, which will be our target sales. Now we can see that we have an orange column in here and our pointer is currently in our orange column. Finally, we have this percentage down here. So we can drop something into our percentage field here and we have percentage of our target. So we can drop that straight into there. Now what we'll find is it has pulled in the count because that is a calculated column and not a measure. So what we're going to do is we are going to take the average and the average is 95.45. So that's our actual sales towards our target sales is 95%, nearly 96%. Now if we hover over some of these for the screen tips, the max is going to show the end value of the max. The target is going to show the end value of the target, which is 3.3 or 3.26. The pointer value doesn't seem to give a value when you go over it because this is the value for the pointer down here. And if you highlight over the red, you can see the end of the red value, the minimum sales, to be this 2.61. Now let's look at slicing and dicing this. And I'm just going to add a filter to our report. And I'm going to put our sales reps into our filter. And I am going to change my selection controls so I can select all. So let's say I wanted to look at sales rep nine. Once I click sales rep nine, this has updated. So we now we can see our actual sales. We can see our end of our minimum sales and we can see the percentage towards our target. We can select two of these. We can look at the exact same for two of them. So it's quite easy then to slice and dice the data as you need to. We can see that sales rep four is only at 67% of their actual target sales. They haven't even reached enough to receive a commission payment. That's how you set up this dial gauge. Like I said, it's not very intuitive. Some of the fields are a little bit confusing. Overall, the visualization looks good, but there isn't very many options. If we go into our format, we can change the title, the background, the lock aspect, general and the border. There's not too many options there. And in the analytics field, there's no analytics available. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give it the thumbs up and don't forget to like and subscribe.